Alright, so I'm just going to be talking about a few things that I was coding on this week with Saffron. So the first one is this thing called Universal Links. So Saffron has an app and a website. And you've probably experienced Universal Links on Facebook or Twitter, probably a social media site you use where they have both a website and an app. And the idea is you want to be able to send the user to their to your app when they're on their phone, but you want to send the user to their website when they're on, say, their computer. So Apple and Google have this thing. I think Google calls it Deep Links. Apple calls it Universal Links. And what it is is basically your app can register a regular expression slash a path that you accept. So like if I go to facebook.com slash, I don't know, profile, Facebook's app can register that path, and so when a user clicks on that URL or goes to that URL on their phone, facebook.com slash profile, it's gonna actually open that up in the app. So that's known as deep linking or universal linking, and I was adding that to Saffron, so when you click on a link of a recipe in Saffron, a uh, shared recipe particularly, and you have the app installed on your phone, that's the other important part. Uh, it checks whether it has it installed on your phone, you click it, it's now going to take you to the app or it's going to take you to the website. Now to do this, I was using, um, I'm using React Native and I'm using this thing called Expo, which is kind of like a React Native framework, I guess you'd say. Um, and they have a package that kind of handles some of this stuff for you. I'm also using a navigation library called React Navigation to do this. And they make things very easy to set up because I just literally say the path like I would on a website and it takes you to the exact screen in the app that I wanted to go to so it was actually very easy to get registered um, once I did all the universal linking stuff like I think you need to set up like a credential on your website so Apple can validate you really own the domain and stuff after that it was pretty easy to set up one thing though I'm having trouble with react navigation right now is tabs like if I go to a link like slash recipe one and then I try going to click on another link like go to slash recipe two it's not refreshing in the app like it would on a website it doesn't go to the same URL it basically has stale data um, and so I need to investigate why the heck it's because I think I'm using a tab navigator in react navigation and it's causing problems but anyway that's one thing I haven't quite fixed yet the other thing that I did this week was uh, do some updates to my server. Uh, this is something that I'm not sure if I'm doing the right way or if I can optimize in a better way. But right now I'm using this thing called Doku and it basically allows you to host your own Heroku uh, on DigitalOcean. Uh, basically the reason why I'm doing this is also it's just way cheaper to be able to host everything on DigitalOcean like my database, Redis, all that jazz than to like do hosted database. So I decided to just go with that for now. And so uh, if I have my database in a, in a VPS or in DigitalOcean, I figured I might as well have my application. So I am using Docu to basically handle that. It makes it pretty easy. But I needed to upgrade my Docu, or I wanted to upgrade it because I haven't upgraded it in a while. So I went ahead and upgraded it. Um, and I basically just turned off the server, upgraded it, and then turned it back on. And I think we had like, you know, maybe half an hour downtime installing all the dependencies I needed to and stuff. And I think that's probably fine, um, but something where I probably can like optimize it in a better way where like I spin up another virtual machine, um, I update a fresh instance of it, and then when it is done installing, I like swap the two virtual machines or something. That way there's less downtime than like 30 minutes or something. So something I'm going to experiment in the future with is if I can get less downtime when updating software and stuff. Lastly, uh, something I've been thinking about is I've been getting these kind of weird bugs where my server starts and just like keeps restarting in the Docker container. I need to investigate it more, but I'm wondering, I've only noticed it starting to happen with uh, using TS node in production. So uh, I'm using TypeScript. So usually you would compile TypeScript and then you'd use node to run it. But I'm just running TS node in production because it seems it's easier and it seemed like there was no problem when I was reading this one issue on the TS node issues about it. 
I'm wondering if it could, uh, I don't know all the ramifications of it yet. I haven't experienced anything weird until now. I'm not even sure if it's related to TS node. That's something I need to investigate further. Um, but there's like no error logs or anything. But I really, I really need to do is because I'm using Docker. I can just run Docker locally and see what's if it'll get any more. I haven't investigated it yet because it kind of went away. It comes and goes. Lastly, I'm still kind of salty that Expo hasn't updated to um, the latest React Native yet because I've been wanting to use React hooks and I've been using it on the website code in React, but I can't use it in React Native code, and I've been using React Native more lately, but Expo hasn't updated yet, so I can't use it. So anyway, I'm just wanting that. Yeah, that's it for this video, guys. If you like it, let me know, and I can do more videos like this.